Hey everybody, this is Fabian Morrison and you're watching Fabian Morrison Presents. And I'm sitting here beside one of the 10 hottest couples. That's what Ebony calls them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call you. <laughs> Mr. Devon Franklin and Mrs. Megan Good Franklin, actress extraordinaire and movie exec and preacher. <laughs> all of that. Get it all. Good. You got it all. You got there we go. All, I'm trying man. to get it all in there. Man, it's a pleasure to have you all here today. Thank you for, Thank you for having us. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming it. through. So look, let's talk about let's talk about what's on everybody's mind. The couple. Yeah. Yeah. We we know you have individual stories, so we're gonna start with the couple. Mm -hmm. Now, what we really want to know is kind of the story, because how did y'all even kind of meet? Yeah, I mean, we met years ago, um, you know, on a general meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, she had produced a film, an independent film uh, mm -hmm. called Miles from Home, yeah. you know, which was really, I mean, most people didn't know going in, but it was a very spiritual film, mm -hmm. you know, about a young man who, you know, teenager who was caught between two worlds and trying to figure out which way to go and who God wanted him to be. Mm -hmm. And she produced it, and she also was one of the stars of it. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that film and uh, said, it was amazing. and said, you know, why don't you come in? And we met. Um, you know, I didn't know that she was into producing. Um, and so just said, hey, if there's anything that you ever need in the future, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Right. But it wasn't like that. It, wasn't, it, 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 was, it, was, it was on a business missing. tip. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that was that like was six business. years before Jumping the Broom. Okay. So we okay. would see each other at church functions. We would see each other on the Sony lot, mm -hmm. um, just in passing. Um, but um, both of us are pretty much always yeah. kind of in relationships yeah. right. and didn't really think that way about it. Um, right. And then when we were doing Jumping the Broom, I actually was in a relationship coming out of it. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, like, wow, that's the kind of guy I wish I could be with. Mm. And, um, and then after Jumping the Broom was done and I came back, um, I got out of that relationship and I was just praying about what God wanted me to do next. And um, within like the next two months, he showed me that God was my husband, that um, Devon was my husband. So God showed you. God showed me that he's my husband. So yeah. when did God show you as well? <laughs> <laughs> See, we got it from yeah, her. I know, right? You know, so but that's, God that's what's you? crazy. She knew, you know, I mean, like almost nine months before we started even dating, right? Wow. And we weren't even in communication at all. You know, so God gave her the revelation, and uh, she just had to wait on it. Right. And I didn't really know until our third date. It was until the third date. You know, oh, well over, you know, nine months, well, well over 10 months at that point in time uh, when God had given her the revelation to the third date when I finally got it. And I was like, wow, Lord, so this is what you have planned, right. you know, and uh, it was it was it was major because I just I wasn't expecting it at all. That that is amazing because, you know, typically we don't get women that really hold their tongue. When God tell them that that's my husband, they going to say, hey, that's my husband. They're going to push up on the guy, right. you know. So this is kind of interesting that we see this and you held your tongue. Didn't yeah. say anything. Yeah. And I, just waited. I asked him, well, what do I do? And he was like, just wait. Wow. And then he said, and get yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. Because I, I knew that there was um, a lot of baggage and a lot of things that I needed to deal with. Okay. And, and I needed that time to do that. Right. Um, and, and just to learn, you know. And then, you know, during that time that I became celibate and... Mm -hmm. um, I needed time to just kind of bump my head and really figure out, you know, how to just look dead at God and let him lead me and guide me. Um, and so that I understood that I wasn't supposed to say anything because I would have messed it up. Right. So. And you're right. It would have messed it up. Women, y'all hear that? To learn from that. But <laughs> I'm going to get hit up on this one. Know, sure <laughs> Crazy. But, <laughs> but look, you know, um, you know, as I was learning some things about you, reading your book, Produced by Faith, Get the book, everybody, produced by Faith. Thank you. you know, I was reading the book, and I was reading some of your past, and, you know, and reading, you know, how you came up and what, what went on with your, your family, your brothers and your father, and mm -hmm. losing your father earlier on. I know that presented some challenges for you moving forward, not in just, you know, business, but also in what could t have impact in a yeah. relationship. Yeah. So tell me how you dealt with that, you know, 
on the way moving, you know, moving forward and, and what challenges are presented here? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's been a process, you know. I mean, I was the last brother of my three brothers to get married. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, going back to just, you know, my father passing, kind of how I felt about that and, and you know, kind of the isolation that it created and, you know, the distance and, you know, creating a distance between me and intimacy. I think it took mm -hmm. years for me to finally get to a place where I could be open enough and to receive, you know, uh, the gift of my wife, you know. And I think a lot of that had to do with the residual processing the emotion, uh, emotional impact of what I dealt with. Um, and so in being married, you know, it's been a great opportunity, you know, especially with her, mm -hmm. you know, where she creates an environment in the marriage where I can be myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I can really get healing from all of that, you know, and I think it's so important, you know, when we do get married to uh, have a spouse that will allow and support Mm -hmm. you know, us to get healed because right. that is so critical. Right. Um, and so I know that, that God, you know, allowed this to come at the right time uh, to help finish the work. Right. I was reading in the magazine here and, and in there they have a letter, like a love letter from you yeah. to Megan, which, yeah. you know, I like the approach they took on, on this yeah. because they really took it from the male's perspective. And yeah. a lot of times you don't get to hear the male's perspective on love. Sure. You always hear from the women. And you said something there um, that I really liked um, in talking about how she showed you pretty much how to love and to love mm -hmm. yourself. Even talk a little bit about that, and and you as well. Um, and and what is it that you? Well, I guess he has to tell you what it did for him. Yeah. But you know, then after that, you know, share what he brought to the table for you to kind of bring you closer into your journey into love. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, I mean, I think for a man, you know, I think love is is sometimes a very uh, tricky endeavor yeah. um, because many times we are taught a false sense of love, you know, and what real love is doesn't always uh, appear, you know, and we're not really taught how to love, you know, and anything that feels a little too soft or a little too, you know, sometimes we're, that's beat out of us, right? you know what I mean? Right. And anything that you sometimes show that could be loving as a young man, there's some people that'll challenge you and say, oh, you're soft or whatever. So men begin to, you know, create this facade that doesn't allow for real love to get through and right. to give real love, you know? Right. And so with Megan, what was just a blessing is that, you know, she really displayed to me this that unconditional love, yeah. you know, like, it's okay, I'm gonna be here, it's all right, mm -hmm. it's okay, it's okay. Like, like you know, stuff I might say or things I might get upset about or impatient about, and I'm like, okay, I know she's gonna say something now. Right. And she wouldn't. Right. She'd just be like, it's all right, honey, it's all right, we can figure it out. Just calm, right. you know, and that sort of calm, patient, just long suffering, mm -hmm. it was the type of thing that helped me really understand that, wow, love is one, it is unconditional. Mm -hmm. And two, I have somebody who would love me like that. Mm -hmm. And then what that did was all of the rage right. that was happening in me, mm -hmm. you know, it just started to calm. Right. Yeah. So she provided kind of like a security for you. Without question. And it's interesting because that's usually what women are looking for. I know, you right? Know, not yeah. to say anything about yeah. that, but we need security as well. Yes, we do. So, Megan, you know, what did Devon kind of bring to you to kind of help, you know, <clears throat> help you on your journey? About? It's, it's kind of crazy, even the way that he said that, because it was very similar for me, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up with my, my dad is very much a part of my life, but you know, my parents separated and divorced when me and my sister were four and six. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of always been out of the house. Ha you know, his job was extremely time consuming and uh, the relationship became what it had, what it is now in our twenties, you know? Um, so I always had the mentality of, you know, that a man will always leave you, that you, you know, have to protect yourself. You have to be able to pick up the pieces immediately. You can't fall apart. Um, to just not be what I thought was weak, mm -hmm. um, to always just be one step ahead. Like my brain would just go through all these, you know, things that weren't true to how I felt in my heart, but they were mentally what I felt I had to tell myself to protect myself. Right. Um, and then, you know, just the things that you go through, you know, in relationships, like growing up, you know, in until you find your husband, if you allow certain things um, to play out, especially just, you know, with the physical part of it and all of that, it's just a lot of damage can be done in the process. And I think that um, with him, one of the biggest things was unconditional love, was, yeah. you know, no matter where I had been or what I had gone through, um, rather someone did that to me or I did that to myself, it, it was like an unconditional just, you know, I love you regardless. Right. And I'd never experienced that before. 
from me anybody outside of my mom, you know? Mm-hmm. And and even still with him, I was and am more um, that, that honesty that you have to find with yourself yeah. that sometimes is hard for you to even tell yourself the truth to be able to share of myself like that with him. Right. It was just something that I never experienced before and brought a lot of healing. And, right. Um, just, you know, a lot of healing. Yeah. Well, what it looks like here is that actually brought healing to each other. Mm-hmm. And, and that's a lot of what a lot of us need, you know, today, you know, in relationships, it, what we need, that asset that we're looking for is just that necessarily yeah. Yeah. from whatever our background is. Yeah. You know, I, I wish I had more time. We're going to have to do a part two at some time in the future, yes. you know, but this is our love segment of Fabian Morrison Presents. <laughs> our love segment. <laughs> it's so great to have you all here. I wish we could talk some more, but, you know, we, we have a program to get to upstairs, yeah. you know. Megan, I want to congratulate you on the show, Deception. It's yeah. an Thank amazing you. show. Thank it's you. great to see our, our, our Afro-American leading ladies. Right. This Thank is, you. hey, that's, that's, right. big, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. And Devon, man, I don't know what I can say about you. It's, you know, you're doing everything, yeah. you know, as well. So I want to congratulate you on your career as well. You know, if people want to reach you all, you know, kind of stay, you know, yeah. in touch with you, Twitter and so on and so forth, you know, tell them where to get um, you. Yeah, I mean, my Twitter handle is at Devon Franklin, you know, at D-E, capital V-O-N, Franklin, all one word. And I'm also on Facebook as well. And you can find me on my website, DevonFranklin.com. I'm on Twitter uh, at Megan Good, one word, um, no E at the end of the, the good. And, and M-E-A. M-E-A. <laughs> G-A-N. Um, and, um, and Instagram at, at Miss Good. Oh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, too, Devon Franklin. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I'm sure you're on Facebook as well and all that. Oh, yeah. Same thing. I'm a little late on the Facebook. Yeah. So. You late? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, catch up, Megan, catch up. I know. <laughs> Look, it's a pleasure having you all here again. Thank you, thank you so much. Sorry about the left hand there. No. But thank right. you so much. Thanks for spending time with me. Look, you can catch this on praisecast.com as well as praisevision.com. This is Fabian Morrison Present. Hey, check me out as well at Fabian Presents on Twitter and Fabian Morrison Presents on Facebook. And you'll catch this interview. This is going to be awesome. Stay locked with us. You get more of, you never know what you'll get on Fabian Morrison Presents. Thanks again, Devon. Thanks again, Megan. We love you. Praise Cast, where real Christians live in real lives. (laughs) 